as complete as KDE is, there are always one or two particular things that we want to do that it doesn't do straight out of the box. And here are five programs, five applications that work better in KDE and, and look better too, that you just might find invaluable. First up is KGeoTag. The value of this application isn't apparent straight away, but it allows you to either change or delete some unwanted information that may be present on every single photograph you take on your smartphone. Many smartphones include such information, sometimes without the user's knowledge, but sometimes, like for instance, you're going to start up an application on your phone and it says, do you want to allow location, etc. And a lot of people, and I've done it myself, you'll press yes without thinking twice. But every time you take a photograph, it will record exactly where you are and when you were there, as well as a whole host of other information which actually may be useful. The problem arises is that if you upload your photograph to the internet or social media and the image is, shall we say, of something valuable, it may tempt some nefarious people to pay you a visit. I'm not saying that's what will happen, but you never know. It's always best to be certain. So, I'll show you an example of what this program can do and indeed what this program can show. So, I've got a folder with, uh, usually it's uh, entitled Photographs, and there's three photographs which I've uh, acquired. And they contain all the um, EXIF information you could want. And there's a uh, fairly, you know, nondescript uh, bunch of information there. About aperture, and exposure, etc. It's all very, uh, very nice. If you click on details, you can see there's GPS data, which is not so nice. And it will give you the longitude and latitude of where you were at the time you took the picture. But that's still numbers. It's always good to see if you can see it in a more graphical format. So what we will do is, we'll just close that down. You can either drag all the pictures you wish to process into KGeoTag or individually. And if an image has the information which you want to edit, then it will appear in that pane there. And if it doesn't, it will be in that one. So it's put it into the left one with the assigned images. And you can drag them both together like that, saves time. So they both appeared there. Right, so that's in England, Germany, and well, there's London, but it's not and Turkey Bodrum. So we know where they are. Clicking on the image and the first one will tell us that's exactly where it is. Look, it's pinpointing on the map. There's London Bridge. And fascinatingly, it gives you an almost exact location. Look, the image is on the riverbank looking at an angle and there it is. So it's quite accurate. The second image is Bodrum in Turkey. And again, the image pops up. The other ones also appear on there um, if you have more than one image in the pane. But we'll look at one at a time. So the Bodrum one in Turkey, again, it's not looking out that side. Uh, it's not looking to the sea there. So it's not looking over empty countryside into the sea but instead it's looking over there over a small town into the coastline there so yeah again it's it's accurate and this other one in the uh, english garden in germany again there's the if we can just settle it up there's the image and i think we're looking forward to where the waterfall is i think that's the waterfall i'm not quite sure probably not but even so, it's still accurate. Now, you can remove the coordinates, and once you do that, the image will go into the other assigned pane, and what we'll do is, yeah, if you look on the, the actual map uh, itself, the small image of the photograph has gone. So we could upload this to the internet quite safely. Very nice indeed. It's, this is one of them programs that you don't know you need until you need it. FreeBSD prides itself on its customizable nature and for almost everything you want to do there is a command line to do it. In this particular case Sweeper is a GUI tool which will help you secure your FreeBSD system in particular regarding your web browser and any uh, clipboard 
and command history and recent applications. A little bit, it's just enough to cover your tracks. So looking at Sweeper, we can see there is the option to clear the clipboard contents stored in Clipper, clears a list of recently used documents from the KDE applications menu. There's an option to clear the history of commands run through the run command tool on the desktop. You can clear the list of recently used applications from the KDE menu, and you can clear all cached thumbnails. And regarding the browsing, you can clear all stored cookies set by websites. I mean, you can do this in Firefox anyway, but it's useful to have one central point where you can do it. Uh, you can clear all the favicons cached from the visited websites. You can clear the history of visited websites. You can clear the temporary cache of websites visited. And you can clear values which were entered into forms on websites. Very useful. And finally, you can clear the cookie policies for all visited websites, if you want to. So yes, we're going to... Uh, I'll test one of them. I'll test the uh, clipboard contents, I think. Right, so I'm going to copy that first picture. Copy it to uh, clipboard. And I should better just paste it in. And there we go, it just says... Uh, Rename it. That's very handy, actually. I suggest a new name, and I'll do. So there's the copy. So I'll just uh, I'll delete that one. I'll delete the right one first. And I should be able to paste it in again because it's in the clipboard. So if I'll unselect them and just select the top one and uh, clear the clipboard content stored by Clipper. So I'll just highlight that. Clean up. It says, you are deleting data that is potentially valuable to you. Are you sure? Yeah, I think I am. Boom, there we go. And now I can't paste it in because there's nothing in the clipboard. It's very simple, but extremely useful. And to have a little GUI program, a little GUI application to do that, brilliant. The usefulness of contrast is really not apparent unless you are doing video editing or graphic editing and you want to get the right shade or perhaps you're doing websites and you want to get the color schemes, etc. like that. Um, this program I've used, its simplicity belies its usefulness. Because if you want to, you want to put some text on screen and you want it to have a background and you want, the, you want it to be visible to almost everybody. Well, to everybody actually, not almost everybody. Then this will allow you to have the best color schemes available. The menu uh, is fairly simple. Favorite colors help about on contrast checker, so which we're obviously looking at now. And it tells you at the top contrast ratio, uh, so it's 6.21. And if I put the invert, of course, it will change that. Randomize. You can select them yourself if you want a specific color scheme in mind, but randomize will bring up some good suggested ones. That tells you it's perfect for large text and good for normal text. And just just things like that. Some of them are fairly garish, but they, if you just keep going, I mean, that's not so bad. Oof, that's, that's bad for your eyes. No, that one I like. So you you'd copy down the hash value there, and the background value, and then you just paste it into the graphics program or the editor that you wanted. I do like this program. It's surprisingly simple, and it's like almost like when you see uh, a colour picker application on KDE. You might not need it there and then, but there will come a time when you do, and it's always useful to have this. So for me, I find this invaluable. Other people, maybe not so. You can view our videos not only on YouTube, but also on Odyssey too. See the link in the description box down below. K rename. Well, this is a batch rename utility, and again, it's, it's like, the, like the previous application that we saw. Um, it may not be apparent straight away that you need this. And this is a, a fantastic one. I've got two folders set up, as you can see, folder A and folder B. And in folder A, there's lots of uh, Sinclair Spectrum games. Well, not a lot, there's only a few that I've got. And I want to rename them into folder B. And it gives a little instruction how to do it. And first, before we start, you can set basic parameters. So on this particular one, you would add some files on this on this tab. On the next tab is where you would like it to go to. So we're going to change that in a bit. Plugins if you want to. And this one just changes what prefixes you would like in the name, etc. So you can use advanced or simple uh, prefixes. 
also fix it actually as well. So number and date, I think we'll just have uh, for that. Right, you can do it individually, of course. If you wanted to do it by hand, then it's fine. You just have to go for all the, the rigmarole of renaming. But batch file renaming lets you do it all at once. So if you just grab all the files there, drag them over to the renamer, and you can then set the parameters that you want. Right, if you want to set the destination, which we do, and I've already set it before, so it's in desktop folder B, uh, plugins, no, we're not going to use plugins on occasion, and the number and date is the prefix and suffix. And it gives you a real time uh, output of what it would look like. You see in that window pane there, it changes. So if you want the date, number, and none at all, it'll go back to how it was originally. You put the date. And you can use custom extensions, uh, original extensions. It's whatever you want to do. It's really. It's really flexible this way. So you can convert to uppercase and lowercase on the extensions if you wish. You can even put any text you want, like hello, with a single L of course. Right, so it's not messing around now, I'll just get back down to business. I'll just put the uh, yeah, it was number and date, and that would be quite good so just when you're ready press finish and it's almost instant and you can see that in the second folder you've got the new files with the number and the date appended at the end really useful uh, especially if you've got a lot of files to rename um, like photographs etc there's no end of media players available uh, for freebsd and kde but aruna is Something which, it struck me as being lightweight, very efficient, simple setup, uh, no difficult, complicated uh, things to tweak. I mean, I, I love VLC, but oh, good grief, you know, it uh, can be a little bit off-putting. But Haruna, they, it, it gets on with the job simply. Now, the audio will pop up once we actually got something playing. But you can open file, open URL, subtitles, and audio. And there's a configure. There's not a great deal of options, but en enough to sort of like uh, get you going. And custom commands is useful. There we are. It's 0.7.3. And one of the options, uh, intriguingly, is uh, it can work with YouTube DL. But I don't know how to get it working with that. So if anyone does, then drop me a comment in the comment section down below and uh, point me in the right direction. So you can drag over your files, of course. It will play almost everything that you uh, drag to it. In fact, it played everything I did drag to it. Uh, I'll just pause that there. So you can play MKV files. MP4s, and the fact that you just drag, hello, that's me from an earlier video. I like it's fully drag and drop, I like that. It's something which I missed from the RiscOS days, or RiscOS. And it can play WebM. It's a good music video, this. So yes, uh, your subtitles, of course, if there's any available. And what this key feature which I like here is that I'll just paste in this uh, YouTube channel. And as you can guess, it can play local files plus remote YouTube files. Now this looks like the one earlier, but this is the full video. And it's streaming directly from YouTube itself. Which is really handy. And like I say, I'm not quite sure how you can save the file. I haven't worked that one out yet. But it's there if you want to do it. And one thing I do like is the add custom command. Now, if you wanted to be very specific what you add, you could add it there and you could run it either as a keyboard shortcut or run it at startup, which is handy. And you've got some playback features. And there's the thing there. I'm not quite sure how that works. But you can set different uh, quality, etc. 
Yes. Very good. Well, one feature which uh, I did like, which will be handy actually when I go back to uh, Motive Window Manager or NWN uh, Window Manager, is you can change, because I've already got it installed, but you can change the color scheme. So this is my FreeBSD scheme and also the GUI style. you got one or two added there, but I've got CDE and Motive. So this will actually blend in really nicely. There you go, look at that. Nice, nice. I do love the motive style. And of course, if you want the default, then you can, of course, or breeze. Yeah, it's really nice. So what's available in this part really depends on what you've got installed. So yes, these are just five uh, applications which I think could easily pass you by. If you've got your own list that you'd like to use on a regular basis with KDE, that integrates nicely into KDE, then drop them in the comment section down below, and I'd love to give them a check out. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.